Eddie Murphy is one of the most successful comedians and actors of all time. His importance in the world of cinema and comedy cannot be overstated. From releasing the highest grossing comedy special of all time, to inspiring an entire new generation of talented young comedians and filmmakers, Eddie has left a permanent mark on the world of entertainment. But what was the catalyst that took Eddie Murphy from a talented young comedian touring around the country performing at comedy clubs to a well-rounded artist that transcended stand-up itself who can yield an eight-figure profit just from appearing in one movie. Today we're going to take a look at Eddie Murphy's Raw, what took place before the special, the initial reception it garnered, and how it skyrocketed Eddie Murphy's career as a whole. But before that, an important question to ask is how did we even get here? To begin with, Eddie Murphy began his comedy career at an incredibly early age when he was just 15 years old. His first comedic performance was at a high school talent show where he did impressions of singer and musician Alan Green. And to say Eddie was a talented and funny young man was a severe understatement. From this point onward, it would take four years before NBC took an interest in Eddie and hired him to be a cast member on the sixth season of Saturday Night Live at just 19 years old, which made him the youngest cast member to ever be hired on the show at that time. The only person who would end up being younger than Eddie was Anthony. Anthony Michael Hall, who was hired in 1985 for season 11 of Saturday Night Live when he was just 17. Furthermore, Eddie Murphy was a standout on Saturday Night Live given his brilliant and unique comedic talent combined with the fact that the show had endured a bit of a rough patch with Lorne Michaels stepping away from running the show back in 1980. During his reign on the show, Eddie Murphy would also make his big screen debut in 1982 for the buddy cop movie directed by Walter Hill titled 48 Hours, where Eddie and Nick Nolte were partners in crime. This movie would prove to be a massive success, and critics and fans alike loved Eddie and Nick's performance. The success of the movie led to a very unique situation where Nick Nolte was scheduled to host SNL on December 11th, 1982, but canceled because he became too sick to appear. So Eddie Murphy would replace him and host the show. This would be the only time in history on Saturday Night Live where a cast member would host the show while still being a regular cast member on the show. With Eddie being such a dominant comedic force, he basically turned Saturday Night Live into the Eddie Murphy show from 1980 to 1984 until his departure after season 10. At the time, SNL was the comedy mecca that took a lot of promising young actors and comedians and launched them into superstardom. So four years on this show did wonders for Eddie Murphy and his reputation amongst comedy fans. Before Eddie Murphy left SNL, he released his first comedy special when he was just 22 years old, titled Delirious, on October 15, 1983, which was recorded at the Dar Constitution Hall. In this special, Eddie took to the stage donning the iconic matching leather pants and jacket with all the confidence in the world, and the performance was something the world of comedy at this point had never seen. The amount of time it took Eddie to work on Saturday Night Live as a cast member while also perfecting and honing his nightclub routine in the evenings after hours is nothing short of extraordinary. Unlike his performances on SNL, when Eddie took to the stage, he was incredibly vulgar and profane, and he did not shy away from any type of topic that might be considered taboo. In fact, it was recorded that Eddie said the words fuck and shit over 400 times in this hour-long special. If Bill Cosby happened to catch a glimpse of this special while he was dropping a pill in some girl's sprite, he probably would have been pissed. In this special, Eddie would talk about a plethora of topics relevant to the 80s such as Michael Jackson, James Brown, racism, Ronald Reagan, the economy, and also some more personal materials such as his family parties and parental discipline he received as a kid. The special was incredibly well received and largely contributed to the momentum leading up to Raw just a few years later. The special was praised by the comedy universe for how legendary it was for the time, and it received an 83% score on Rotten Tomatoes and an overall rating of 7.5 out of 10. I personally would consider Delirious one of the funniest comedy specials of all time. Delirious would also go on to win Best Comedy Album at the 1984 Grammy Awards. Eddie did receive some criticism for the special. Some people perceived it as anti-gay, but Eddie made it abundantly clear this was not the intention behind his jokes. The special was widely praised by 
fellow comedians. For example, comedian Robert Townsend said that Delirious put Eddie Murphy into a league of his own in stand-up comedy. Robert Townsend would also end up directing Eddie's next special, titled Raw. Many other comedians praised the special, such as Chris Rock, Chris Tucker, Sinbad, Cedric the Entertainer, and Martin Lawrence. While the special was a huge deal for Eddie and had a massive impact on the comedy landscape, it would be nothing compared to Raw. When Eddie returned to being a nightclub comedian full-time after SNL, he would still appear in several movies for the next few years, but all of Eddie's comedy shows would start to sell out, and he realized at this point that he was basically the hottest thing in comedy since Richard Pryor that time he freebased cocaine. Oh, fuck. Anyway, three years later, after Eddie Murphy left SNL, and after years of honing the craft of comedy and building a new hour, Eddie would release the special that really topped off his comedy career, entitled Raw. This 90-minute long special would be released on December 18th, 1987, and was shot at Madison Square Garden, located in New York City. The special was technically released first on November 25th, 1987 in the United Kingdom, but that's not in America, so who gives a fuck about them? I'm just kidding. Anyway, while Delirious was a stand-up special that was released on HBO, Raw was a comedy experience that received a wide theatrical release and was shown in movie theaters across the country. To say this special ended up being a cultural phenomenon would be a massive understatement. I mean, in addition to being released like a movie, theaters would sell out showings for it in the first several weeks of its release, pulling in just north of $9 million its opening week. The special opens with a scene of Eddie's family during Thanksgiving, where a young Eddie Murphy, played by Dion Richmond, shared his talents with his relatives, one of which was his uncle, played by Samuel Jackson. Then after this opening sketch, Eddie takes the stage at the garden, donning a leather purple jacket, pants, and leather black gloves to a thunderous standing ovation. Then he proceeds to give the performance of a lifetime in a nearly 90 minute set of him doing material that reflected on the perception of his last special, how Bill Cosby reacted to it, and the advice he received from Richard Pryor. Eddie also sheds some light of his view on intersexual dynamics between men and women, marriage, divorce, Italians, race, and also some stories from his childhood upbringing, etc, etc. In typical Eddie Murphy fashion, the show built on the reputation of Delirious by being incredibly vulgar and profane, consisting of 223 fucks, which surpassed the movie Scarface and set the feature-length film record. In fact, the special was initially given an X rating before it was released, but there were several omissions and cuts made in post-production that allowed Raw to secure a rated R rating before its release. It's crazy to think that there's a director's cut of this movie on the cutting room floor that is even more profane and vulgar than the version we got. With the monsoon of hype surrounding Eddie Murphy from his four years as a cast member on Saturday Night Live, his legendary movie roles in movies like 48 Hours and Best Defense, and also his highly successful debut comedy special Delirious, the people were foaming at the mouth for some more content from Eddie Murphy, and Raw was was the perfect product that delivered exactly what they needed. The reception to Raw instantly solidified Eddie Murphy as a comedy legend and had a lot of people saying he was the second coming of Richard Pryor. Speaking of which, before Raw, the highest grossing comedy special at the time was Richard Pryor's Live at the Sunset Strip, which received $7 million on its opening week and had a lifetime gross of $36 million. This was a record nobody thought would be broken anytime soon, but just a few years later, Eddie Murphy's Raw cleared this record with ease, accumulating a lifetime gross of over $50 million. When you consider the time that this took place and take inflation into account over the last 37 years, nowadays this would probably be well over $200 million. This special being so well received really launched Eddie's career and took his fame and superstardom to an unfathomable level. I've covered in another video how after this special, anytime Eddie Murphy would go to the comedy store to do stand-up and work out new material, whatever the bit was would end up in the paper the next day, so any element of surprise he tried to preserve in the bit to make it funny for a new audience was immediately sabotaged by his immense fame. That's my biggest regret is the yes. stopping. Like, I used to just go and do it. Right. Stopping and letting that muscle atrophy. Yes. And it got to where, when I was working out stuff, it would be in the paper like the next day. They were on me too much 
during the creative process. I remember I, uh, Joan Rivers' husband had, had died, and I went up at the comedy store and I did some shit I said that was, you know, right. <laughs> that wasn't cool. And it was in the paper the next day, and, and everyone was outraged, and right. Joan was hurt, and I was like, that wasn't even a bit yet. This made it really hard for Eddie to want to do stand-up consistently again after the release of Raw. Not to mention, Eddie had become such a beloved talent on the big screen and was getting paid so handsomely that he favored directing and acting in movies over doing stand-up comedy on the road. Go figure. After Delirious and Raw and their marvelous reception, Eddie had reached a new level of fame and fortune that basically granted him the option to walk away from stand-up comedy completely. With everything he'd ever wanted finally secured, Eddie could just have fun and get paid $20 million a movie now while his kids were growing up. There would also be a risk in returning to stand-up comedy after such a long sabbatical. Even being as talented as Eddie is, I think it's fair to say that if he returned, he would have some rust to shake off since it's been decades since we last saw him perform at a comedy club. The last thing Eddie would need after his monumental success was some articles about how he doesn't have it anymore and was only funny when he relied on problematic humor or whatever type of bullshit these publications would write. In sum, Eddie Murphy's Raw cemented him as a legend in comedy and was the peak of Eddie's fame and success on stage. He was so successful with Raw that it made it hard for him to do stand-up because of his massive profile and also because he had set the bar so high for himself with the highest grossing comedy special of all time. But from his success, Eddie turned his focus to acting and directing movies and we got the Beverly Hills Cop movies, Dr. Doolittle, The Nutty Professor, Professor, and many more movies that I could list. The special really changed Eddie's career forever, and if you guys are interested, I've considered starting something new where I break down comedy specials I really like and talk about why I enjoyed them so much and parts that stuck out to me. I thought about Eddie Murphy's Raw and talking about how I believe it holds up, so if that's something you'd be interested in down the line, please let me know and I'll give it some serious consideration. I'd love to discuss some comedy specials and how they've aged with all of you. Anyway, Anyway, what do you guys think? Were Delirious and Raw two of the greatest comedy specials ever? Do you think they were overrated? Do you guys think Eddie should have tried to film another special? Or do you think his unique talent was better utilized on the big screen in TV and movies? Let me know what you think in the comments down below. As always, I want to thank you guys for watching the video, leaving a thumbs up, and subscribing to the channel if you're new here. That's all I got for you today. I love you guys, and I'll see you in the next one. Take care.